Hello everyone, Calamity here, at least before Silverwolf hacks my account. Today's video is going to be all about Diluc, who was once considered to be the very best DPS in the game, at least early on in Genshin's lifespan. These days, however, he does get outclassed by a certain funeral parlor director, and there are definitely more pyro DPS options these days. However, Diluc is still going to be a very solid pyro DPS. He's used in a wide variety of teams, such as the ever-famous Vaporize team. You can also put him in a Melt team or even a Burgeon team if you so wish. However, the biggest advantage that Diluc has over the other 5-star pyro characters is that he's a standard character, so he is always available, quote-unquote, so to speak. Now I'm not saying that to try to curse your future pulls or to make you lose your 50-50s, but I mean that in a way that it's actually possible to pull Diluc at any time, whether it be on the standard banner or the, a limited banner if you lose your 50-50. This also means that you can get his constellations and those aren't exclusively whale territory. And with that being said, in this guide video we're going to go everything you need to know to how to properly build Diluc. We're going to talk about his talents, we're going to talk about his weapon options, artifacts, team setups, constellations, a very short combo tutorial, and of course a combat showcase at the very end. We have quite a lot to cover, so let's get started with his talents. Now unlike other DPS characters who only focus on maybe one or two talents, for Diluc's case we are focusing on his entire kit. So it's very important before you even start looking at his kit that it's very important to upgrade the entirety of it. So you're going to want to upgrade his normal attack and his elemental skill uh, having a higher priority but you definitely also want to pump in some levels to his burst. Now let's start with the normal attack talent. As we can see on the left here that it is a pretty standard normal attack talent, nothing fancy here. Uh, the only difference is that his charge attack he does a series of slashes it's a little it's like a little mini combo um, he doesn't spin like other claymore characters do but other than that um, we're not actually using the charge attack in fact we're just doing the basic four hit combo that he has here with that being said let's move right into the uh, elemental skill which is called searing onslaught now this is a very basic elemental skill and we appreciate that because it's much easier to explain but you press the skill and he will do a forward slash that deals pyro damage and this can be used three uh, times consecutively uh, if you do not cast the elemental skill within a certain window it will enter a it will enter cooldown so if we look at the skill attributes you can see that the hits do more damage as you continue to press the elemental skill and it has a cooldown of 10 seconds also worth noting that each usage of his skill will generate energy particles making energy regeneration overall for Diluc pretty easy finally we have the burst which is simply called dawn this is where Diluc is going to summon a gigantic phoenix that will damage enemies in front of Diluc and it will apply a damage over time effect. Now depending on the size of the enemy that's hit by the phoenix, if it's a larger enemy like the huge hillichurls, it will simply go through them. Uh, same with like Fatui enemies and, and ruin guards and stuff like that. If it's a smaller enemy like the slimes or the, the smaller hillichurls, it will actually push them away from you and this can kind of be annoying because if you're just trying to farm either like items or you're trying to follow up your burst with a combo which is what you're normally supposed to do it can be annoying because you have to chase after them um, if they don't hit a wall or an object first um, but the important thing about this burst is actually not its damage so if we look at the skill attributes we can see at level 8 that it does do a fairly good amount of damage however what's important is the fact that this has an infusion duration this burst infuses Diluc's normal attacks with pyro. This means all of your normal attacks will be doing pyro damage instead of physical. And this is really, really good, especially when you're using him with vaporize or melt. So you're able to consistently do more elemental reactions, which means more damage overall. And we can see it has a very, very low cost of 40. This is why Diluc doesn't need as much energy recharge as other uh, characters do. Just it's very minimal. And because again, Searing Onslaught can be used up to three times and it does generate particles each time you use it, making it a very easy burst to, to keep doing consistently. Now let's move on to his Ascension talents. We have the first one, which is called Relentless. This is going to reduce our stamina cost when doing his charge attack by 50% and increase the duration of the slashes by three. Unfortunately, this Ascension passive is pretty much useless as we do not, again, we don't really use charge attacks with the Luke. you're more than welcome to if you want but none of the combos 
that Diluc uses uh, involve using his charge attack. So let's move on to the next ascension talent, which is way better, called Blessing of the Phoenix. So when you use your burst, you're going to get a longer pyro infusion. It's going to last for four additional seconds, which is great. And additionally, the Luke is going to get 20% pyro damage bonus during the duration of the effect. That is why when we're talking about combos coming up in just a bit here, most of the combos always have you start off by using his burst first. So getting that burst up and ready is key to doing um, all of Deluke's combos. And finally, we have Tradition of the Dawn Knight, which is going to refund 15% of the ore uh, used when you're crafting any sort of claymore type weapons at the blacksmith. Next up, let's talk weapons for Deluke. You might be seeing that mine has the Milled Flower. This is an event weapon, so it's really hard to recommend it for newer players. But it, hey, if you have one, it's actually a really good option for him. But let's kind of start you with what a good starter weapon is, and then we'll sort of build up from there. So we have the prototype Archaic. This is a weapon I recommend for new players if you don't have anything else uh, for Deluke in terms of weapons. This is a weapon you can craft as early as Mondstadt, and you can gather all the materials you need just to craft. You don't even have to get refinements on it, honestly. Just level up the weapon. It does have a substat of attack percentage, and this will basically carry you early on in the game. Now, once you've started doing some some pulls on the standard banner or even a limited banner or even later on in the game when you start doing weapon banner pulls, like what are you looking for in terms of weapon options for Deluke? Honestly, you have a ton. You could use something like a Lithic Blade. One of the more popular teams to use Deluke in is a Vaporize team and one of his best teammates is either going to be a Jin Cho or Yolan. And both of these characters hail from Li Wei, so this is going to give you a stack of attack percentage increase as well as crit rate. You can give him a Blackliff Slasher, which is a somewhat free to play option. You purchase this weapon from Paimon, uh, who charges you the currency you get from doing your pulls. Uh, this is a four star Claymore that gives you crit damage as a subset, so it's a pretty decent stat stick. And the weapon's effect is uh, it's all right for just dealing with groups of enemies. And honestly, one of the best free-to-play options and a weapon you'll definitely see more of is a Rain Slasher. Uh, this is going to be good no matter what kind of team you're building Delucian, whether it be Burgeon, Melt, or uh, Vaporize because of the Elemental Mastery substat. But Vaporize teams definitely get more, even more, advan or, uh, more value from this weapon because of the weapon's effect, increasing the damage that opponents take by Hydro or Electro by 36%. Now, because we're doing Vaporize, right, that, that's the combination of both Hydro and Pyro, so of course your opponents are going to be affected by Hydro. So you're going to get an even higher damage bonus here, but this is still going to be good for the other two comps as well. And one of the best 4-star options I can recommend, but not for free-to-play players, is the Serpent Spine. I have a couple of these because I'm a dirty spender and I bought the Battle Pass a few times back in the day. Uh, but this is the Battle Pass exclusive Claymore, so you can only get it if you purchase the Battle Pass. Uh, the Serpent Spine increases your damage and gives you a bunch of crit rate uh, as a substat. It's a really, really good weapon, but unavailable for free-to-play players, unfortunately. And then, of course, if you do have any 5-star Claymores, they are definitely going to be an upgrade over the Prototype Archaic, so even a Skyward Pride, uh, which has energy recharge as a substat, is going to be... Uh, better than the uh, prototype. Um, other 5-star options are going to be, of course, the Wolf's Gravestone, the Red uh, Redhorn Stone Thresher, uh, even an Unforged is pretty good. And of course, if you were able to get this weapon in the fast, in the fast, in the past, excuse me, uh, Dia's signature weapon is also really good here. The Beacon of the Reed Sea, uh, going to be really good for Deluc. So plenty of weapon options there. Plenty of plenty of free to play. Um, as well as 5-star options if you're able to pull on those. Next up, we have Artifact Setups for Deluke, and this is going to be really easy because you're going to want the Crimson Witch of Flame set. You're going to want the 4-piece effect here. Uh, this set was basically tailor-made for Deluke, and it doesn't matter which team uh, you're using him in, it basically gives him an increase in his damage overall. So the 2-piece effect gives you Pyro damage increase. The 4-piece effect is going to increase your Burgeon damage by 40%. And it's going to increase your Vaporize and Melt by 15%. So whatever team you're building him for, that 4-piece effect giving you a huge boost in damage. As well as your Elemental skill is going to increase the 2-piece effect 
uh, bonus by 50% for three stacks. So it's going to increase it by 22.5% more pyro damage because you easily get those three stacks, right? By using your elemental skill three times. So very, very easy uptime on the four piece here. If you do decide to give him a Crimson Witch of the Flames, I do not recommend farming the actual domain. The reason you don't want to farm the domain is because it is terrible for your time and your resin because you could end up getting a bunch of lava walkers and that is com that is the set we don't want and you're going to end up using this mysterious mystic offering anyways to convert those pieces into crimson witch of the flame so what i do recommend is farm a different artifact set for for you know any other character that you're building or try to go for a more resin efficient domain and turn all of the crappier artifacts that you get into crimson witch pieces what are some other artifact sets you can give for Diluc, especially like early on, so you don't you can't farm Crimson Witch just yet? Uh, a good option to give Diluc is going to be a Gilded Dreams. This is going to be better for him if you're going for Burgeon team comps uh, because of the added elemental mastery. And one more set that I can recommend early on is going to be the Gladiator's Finale. This is just going to straight up give you some more extra damage. What substats are you looking for? It's pretty easy since Diluc is our main DPS. And just like building any other main DPS in Genshin, one of the biggest stats you're going to look for is crit rate and crit damage. Um, and then next after that is going to be elemental mastery. Especially since we're using him in a lot of elemental reactions, of course, we want to amplify that damage. Next up is going to be act, uh, attack percentage. And then finally, uh, your last priority is to get some energy recharge. You don't want to give him none, but you also don't want to give Diluc too much. He doesn't. He definitely doesn't need a lot of energy recharge compared to someone like, say, Raiden Shogun or something like that. When you're looking for the main stat for the sands, the goblet, and the circlet, it's not too hard to find the main stat you're looking for. Again, if you're doing Burgeon, elemental mastery on everything as your main stat. That's what you're looking for and only what you're looking for. Now, if you're doing DPS stuff, you have a little bit more options. So for the sands, you can either go attack percentage like I did here, or you can go elemental mastery. The difference between the two is honestly going to be in which substats you have uh, which one has the better substats. So just go for the one that gives you more crit damage, crit rate, attack percentage, things like that. For the goblet, pyro damage bonus if you're doing vaporize or melt, elemental mastery if burgeon. You can settle for something like an attack percentage goblet early on uh, if you don't have any good pyro damage bonus uh, goblets. And finally, so the circlet, either crit rate or crit damage, whichever one you're lacking. Uh, since crit rate is an ascension stat for Diluc, it is more likely that you're going to need a crit damage one. And then again, if you're going Burgeon, just elemental mastery for your main stat. All right, this is going to be a really short tutorial on how to do Diluc's most common combo. Now, of course, just like with any character, there are more advanced and more trickier combos that you can do for more damage or depending on the situation. Uh, if you want to do so that's going to make this video way too long so i'm just going to show you the basic combo it's very easy to do um the first thing you always want to do before doing a dilute combo is to have his burst as we mentioned before in the talent section uh, the burst gives you pyro infusion which is going to make your normal attacks do pyro damage and we want that to do as many elemental reactions as we can so whether you're doing melt whether you're doing vaporize the only team comp that doesn't matter for this kind of thing is burgeon because you just need to hit the seeds with the luke and you can do that with his elemental skill all right for the combo annotation q stands for your elemental burst e stands for your elemental skill and the n stands for your normal attacks and then the number by the end is how many normal attacks you do so with every combo you always start with your burst then we're going to do two normal attacks into skill, and then two more normal attacks, skill again, two more normal attacks, and then you do a skill. And that's the entirety of the most common Diluc combo. This is going to set him up for doing the most damage, especially when you look at his constellations. And it's very easy to do. There's no animation canceling you have to do. There's no... And by the time you do that, that combo, 
Like, for example, if, in this Melt team, you know, usually by then, Rosaria's burst is probably going to be expired by then. Same with Bennett's buff, it's probably going to be expired, and same with Kazuha's uh, buff as well. So, usually by the time you do that combo, you can just swap off and kind of reapply everyone's bursts again, or build them up, and then set it up all over again for Dilute to do his combo uh, once again, once he gets his burst back. And that's pretty much it for his combos. Let's talk about Constellations, and one of the more... Interesting things about Deluxe con Constellations is that, is that you can actually get them. As we mentioned earlier, this isn't exactly exclusive whale territory here because since he is a standard character, you know, he could show up on your standard pulls or even as a 50-50 loss. So C1 is called Conviction, and this is going to make Deluxe do 15% more damage when your opponent's HP is above 50%. It is an okay Constellation. Nice little damage boost here. So C2 is called Searing Ember, and when Deluke takes damage, his attack will increase by 10% and his attack speed will increase by 5. This lasts for 10 seconds and this can stack up to 3 times. So overall you can get a 30% increase to your attack and a 15% increase to your attack speed once you get hit 3 times with Deluke. And this can only occur once every 1.5. Next up we have C3 and C5 which will increase your skill and burst respectively, which is great. It just means your elemental skill is going to do even more damage, which is nice. And then the Phoenix is also going to do more damage as well, which is welcome. Now C4 is where things get a little bit more interesting. It's called Flowing Flame, and when you cast his elemental skill in rhythm, you're greatly going to increase your damage dealt. So two seconds after casting Searing Onslaught, you cast the next one in the combo, and you'll deal 40% additional damage, and this effect lasts for two seconds. That is why that combo that I just showed you is perfect for C4. If you have C4 Diluc, this is the perfect combo to do with C4. So you, by the time you do two um, normal attacks, this is that two second period uh, where you can cast your elemental skill again for that 40% increased damage. This is a really, really good consolation and it's going to just increase your damage overall. And lastly, we have his C6, which is called Flaming Sword Nemesis of the Dark. So after you cast Searing Onslaught, the next two normal attacks within the next six seconds will have their damage and attack speed increased by 30 seconds. Additionally, additionally Searing Onslaught will not interrupt the normal attack combo. Now, this is a really, really good constellation that stacks on top of the Flowing Flame. So now that you're doing this sort of rhythm, right, when you're doing your elemental skill, your two normal attacks are going to be much faster and deal damage. So this is going to make that window of casting your elemental skill more, you know, you have more time in case like you're fighting an enemy that maybe moved a bit and you can still get those quick two normal attacks off. But additionally, because your combo does not get interrupted and you don't have to start from the beginning, that means you're doing hits three and four in Deluxe's normal attack combo. Now remember in the talent section when we were talking about the multipliers being higher at the end? That means your Deluxe's normal attacks are going to be doing much, much more damage because you're doing the later half of his combo. So this is a really, really nice damage boost again for Deluxe. So C4 and C6 are definitely going to be his best constellations when it comes to increasing his personal damage. In fact, with C6, I'm pretty sure that opens up the opportunity for even more crazy uh, combos that you can do with Deluke. All right, let's talk team comps with your Deluke. So we have the... Uh, ignore the bottom left name, please. Okay, I don't have team slots. But we have the Melt team that I was showcasing during the combo section of this vid. Uh, we have Rosaria here, who's going to apply a bunch of Cryo, and Deluke basically melts off her Cryo damage resulting in big, big damage. Now we have Bennett here for heals, as well as the damage boost for Deluke, as well as Pyro Resonance. So that's a lot of free attack for our Deluke. It's basically lots and lots of damage. Kaza here is to group up our enemies and to apply his very decent veneer uh, debuff, as well as buff our damage uh, once again. Um, this would be a basic example of a melt team, but you don't have to run them in a melt. In fact, I'm pretty sure the more optimal or more popular team that uh he's running a lot is the vaporize team now again you could also use the same teammates here or you can you can do something like instead of kazuha and you want more um single target damage or something like that you can if you do have her you can swap in a yalan 
and do double vaporize uh, there. And then if you're wanting to run a Burgeon team with Diluc, it would look something like this. You don't have to run Nahida, although she's really good. You can just use someone like Dendro Traveler or Kali uh, for your Dendro. And then we have Jing Cho for Hydro purposes for the Bloom. And then Diluc will be your trigger. And then the fourth slot is honestly a flex uh, slot. It doesn't have to be Zhongli. Uh, it can be anyone you want it to be. Like Layla, for example, if you don't have another shielder. Or if you don't have Zhongli as your shielder, I should say. So plenty of options on how you want to build him. And they're all going to be right. Because Deluke's an amazing character. Does a lot of damage and can work with a lot of teammates. Alright, we're back in my favorite domain for showcasing characters. So we're just going to fight some wolves here with Deluke. We don't have um his elemental burst, so there's... I kind of wasted uh, Rosaria's uh, burst there. That's kind of my bad. That's okay. We'll just grab Luke's burst. Then we're going to do everyone's burst again just so we can get the full damage. Pretty sure this thing's going to be dead by then. Oops. Oh. oh. There we go. Getting some nice melts. Alright, now that the combo's over, we basically have to rebuild everyone's burst again, which isn't too hard. So we go again. So here we can showcase the combo. You always want to start with the burst, right? And then two normal attacks into skill, and then he's already dead. So you do two normal attacks into skill, and then two normal attacks into skill. And there's the full combo, but... I kind of got messed up because the wolf died and we were kind of attacking a different one. That's okay. Do it again. Whoops. And that's basically the rotation, at least for Melt. Uh, Vaporize is going to be the same. And Burgeon... Burgeon, you just kind of just want to wait for the Dendro cores to be spawned in before you use the loot to... Um, to pop the Dendro cores for Burgeon damage. Use his burst again. Oh, that's okay. We're not really melting anything because Rosaria's uh, skill or uh, burst already expired. That was kind of weird. And uh, this guy teleported away from my burst. Alright, let's go ahead and just finish this up. So Deluc is still a very solid DPS, but as I mentioned before, he does get outclassed by other characters like Yoimiya and Hu Tao. Like Yoimiya just applies damage much faster, and she also has the, you know, the safetyness of being ranged. Doesn't have to chase her enemies around too much. Hu Tao just deals damage faster, and she can hit multiple enemies at once uh, with her charge attacks. Not everyone's gonna have Yoimiya. Not everyone's gonna have Hu Tao. Especially if you're new, you know, we don't know when their next rerun banner is going to be. So Deluc is a very solid DPS, and hopefully I was able to showcase, at least in that last domain, that he was doing some pretty good damage and was getting some pretty good melts. If we're just talking about casual play and just trying to get by and, and defeat bosses and stuff, Deluc can absolutely do that. And yes, he can also very much use Deluc in the Spiral Abyss are able to do Spiral Abyss, 36 star it with all sorts of teams, Melt the Luke, Vaporize the Luke, Burgeon the Luke, so it's definitely doable, definitely possible. And Deluke, again, just an overall solid character. Yes, he definitely got power crept, but that's just the nature of gacha games. The more characters that get added, of course they're going to make the newer characters, you know, stronger and better, because they want you to pull on those banners, right? But that doesn't mean Deluke's just bad now or just awful or not worth building he very much is and he's definitely going to carry you and i would honestly say that he can be more fun than the other pyro dps characters and with that being said i think this is a good spot to wrap up the guide i've gone on long enough so hopefully this guide was helpful to somebody out there uh, let me know what character you want to see next and if i forgot anything if you have additional questions on Luke, something i missed feel free to ask me in the comments down below I'll do my best to try to answer you. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and or subscribe if you like this kind of content and want to see more in the future. And I will see you all in the next video.